I absolutely adore PC gaming, and the reason really is just because it is so flexible. But when it comes to actually choosing the components for your gaming PC, I think it can get quite confusing. So I wanted to sit down with you and actually go through every single one of these components one by one, so that you know what everything does, and if you are picking up a new gaming PC, Hopefully it's a little bit less scary and you can have more information so that when you go into buying all of these things, you know what they do and roughly how they're gonna affect your PC and of course how much they cost. But first, a message from our pre-roll sponsor, Nvidia and Asus ROG and their epic RTX and GTX graphics cards. High frame rate gaming not only brings lower latency, smoother animations and better visibility, but it can bring a genuine advantage over your competition as quicker reaction times only increases the chances of making that game-winning strike. You can pick up an NVIDIA Frameswin Games graphics card, starting with a mighty GTX 1660 Super, and you can learn a little bit more about this and start your high frame rate journey with the links down below. The first thing that you should always focus on is one of these, a graphics card. And the reason that a graphics card is so important for all of your gaming needs is because this will actually handle all of the gaming aspects pretty much and it does all of the rendering and it's what directly sort of dictates what your frame rate is gonna be and what sort of resolution you can actually run your PC with. Which is why it's always important to actually work out exactly what you're almost trying to achieve with your gaming PC and then get a graphics card that is appropriate for that. So if you're just wanting to play maybe some lighter titles at 1080p, then you don't need to spend much money on a graphics card at all. But likewise, if you're wanting to go for 4K, 120 hertz, then you're gonna need the best graphics card that you can possibly get. And actually buying one is pretty simple these days. All you need to do is look at the benchmarks for all of the different graphics cards and the sort of budget um, that you actually have. And then this will tell you what sort of monitor you can get, what sort of resolutions that you'll be able to run it at. And it sort of all links very nicely and neatly together. And you're typically looking at one from Nvidia. This is an RTX 2080 Super, or you're looking at one from AMD. So this is a 5500 XT. And what you might notice is that this actually has two different sorts of branding on it. You have the AMD Monkey, and then you have the Sapphire branding. So what's this all about? Well, the way it works is that Nvidia and AMD will release a GPU or a graphics card, and then it's actually up to the different manufacturers to sort of tweak this a little bit, put their own cooling solution on it, and then sell it to you. So you're almost buying a graphics card that's been made by two different people. So here it'd be Sapphire and AMD or if you get the stock or reference design, or this is the founder's edition from Nvidia, then you're getting a card that they've not only manufactured, but one that they've also designed. And the reason that some of them are a little bit bigger than others is plainly because, depending on how powerful it is, it's gonna generate more heat and you're gonna need more cooling to actually dissipate all of that heat throughout your chassis. All that you really need to know is that if you buy quite a powerful graphics card, you're gonna need a better power supply and you are going to actually need to have the physical space to put this inside your case. So don't go buying a huge graphics card if you're putting it inside a tiny ITX chassis. So that's the graphics card out of the way anyway. Again, that is a very important bit of the puzzle and if I was buying a gaming PC, I would always pick the graphics card first as it's gonna directly dictate what your frame rate is gonna be in game. But the motherboard and CPU is a very close second place because this is pretty much the heart of your computer. Everything sits on here, so that graphics card will actually slot into one of these slots down below, what we call PCIe slots. Our CPU is this thing here. So I'd typically point you towards getting something like a Ryzen 7 CPU or maybe a Intel i7 CPU, as these are normally the best sort of gaming CPUs if you've got a fair bit of money to throw at it. But likewise, you can go for an i5 or a Ryzen 5, and these are also great bets especially if you're looking at the more budget-friendly system. Six to eight cores is gonna be great for all of those really intensive games, things like Battlefield 5 or maybe something like, well, even Apex Legends, if you're playing at a high frame rate, does require a decent CPU. And all you need this to do is to be able to keep up with this. They work together in tandem, they share data between the two different things, and things like physics um, within the game engine are normally handled by the CPU. So if a lot of things are going on, there's a big explosion, and you don't have a very good CPU, then you'll find that your game will start stuttering and then it will go back to normal. So you wanna avoid that by having the best CPU really that you can afford that sort of matches the performance, I guess, of the graphics card. That's probably the best way of describing it. I'll leave a load of different uh, links down in the description below though and have more information so that I'm not just rambling about some really good pairings for graphics cards and CPUs and you can check out current pricing, things like that, all of that good stuff. 
Moving swiftly on to this, which is the RAM or the memory. These have actually changed a fair bit in recent years. They're getting a lot faster. These are DDR4 sticks. They've got RGB lighting at the top, which of course makes your PC run so much faster, right? All you need to do is make sure that you're buying the right speed and the right capacity. I would recommend getting at least eight gigabytes for a gaming system. In terms of speeds, anything above 3000 to be honest. So 3000 megahertz is a great place to start. If you're running a super high end Ryzen CPU, then 3600 is probably the way to go. But as a general rule of thumb, get the fastest memory you can up until the point where it gets silly expensive because it doesn't affect gameplay that much as long as you're not getting something that is super slow. Something else that doesn't directly affect your frame rate per se, but is actually incredibly important is the storage. If you're building a brand new PC, then getting something like this, which is just a normal spinning hard drive, I wouldn't really recommend doing because they're quite slow. The advantage is all about capacity. And if you don't need that capacity, then that only strength pretty much disappears very quickly. So you're probably gonna wanna look at something like this, which is an SSD. This is a 970 Evo Plus from Samsung. And this actually will go directly on your motherboard. You have these little slots that are covered up at the moment with heat sinks. So you'll screw them directly into the board. You won't need any cables. Whereas if you're getting something like a SATA SSD, it will look a little bit like this and it actually goes in your case somewhere and then you hook it up with a SATA power and data connection at the top. Not really a big deal, but I suppose it is an extra step. I would recommend that you do get an SSD at least in some capacity. That's probably quite a good joke there. I'm very proud of that myself, on, on the fly joke. Just because booting into Windows, it's so much faster with an SSD. The OS is quite heavy these days. So if you have just a normal spinning hard drive, it can take ages to actually get in, launch programs, all of that stuff. In terms of what capacity you should go for, they're getting cheaper and cheaper, but games are also getting bigger and bigger. So I would recommend that if you could only get one thing, just get one SATA SSD, make that your boot drive and just a couple of your games that your favorites can sit on there for now. And then you can buy another hard drive a little bit later once you have a bit more cash and you'll know exactly how much space you're gonna need. Now I've mentioned the power supply quite a few times in this video, but I haven't actually talked about it specifically. So this is what you're looking at. It's a big box. This is Be Quiet Straight Power 11. And this is a power supply, which is, let's be honest, incredibly boring, but exciting at the same time. When I'm buying one, there's two main factors really, which is making sure that it actually has enough power for your system. This is a 650 watt power supply, which in this day and age, there's very few people, I think that's gonna need more than that. It's only when you start to get multiple graphics cards and things in one system that things get very toasty or if you've got a very high-end CPU and you're overclocking it. But then the other thing is whether you get a modular or non-modular power supply. And if you're buying quite a small case and you buy a modular power supply, then this means that all of the cables can actually be detached directly from the power supply, which does make it more expensive to manufacture. And of course you pay more for the privilege, but then it keeps your PC looking nice and tidy. And you probably realized at this stage that you will need some of these fans and they will, if I can spin it, they will actually attach to your case and get all of that hot air within your system and chuck it out, fantastic. And depending on the case you get, you will actually normally get some case fans included as standard. Obviously quite cheap cases or enclosures will come with few and pretty naff fans, but as you step up, you're gonna get better and better cooling. And the reason I'm holding this motherboard up again is because this is quite a big motherboard. This is an ATX motherboard and you can only fit this inside a ATX case. It will say this in the specifications, it should be very easy to spot, but if you wanna go for something smaller, then you're looking for a micro ATX motherboard or a mini ITX motherboard. These are the main three sizes that you're gonna see out there and you're only gonna be able to fit these in a case of the appropriate size. But when we're talking about individual component cooling, then we're mainly talking about the CPU because the graphics card will have a cooler on it already, so you don't need to worry too much about that. And there's pretty much two ways to go for processor cooling, which is something like this, which is an all-in-one radiator and a pump. So the pump is actually within this block that will sit on the CPU. This then connects to your case and then all of the heat from the CPU will go up into the radiator and then the fans will blow that out of your case and then the water will sort of circulate the heat, if you like, from the CPU to the radiator and then it's this nice cool loop. It works quite well. On the contrary though, you could actually go for something like this, an air cooler. This is Corsair's brand new A500. They seem to be coming a little bit back into fashion now. And I do like air coolers, but I find that they do typically need to be set up correctly in order to 
get the best level of performance and acoustics. There's no right or wrong answer, but I think for a lot of people, especially if you're buying a mail order one, then a radiator is a bit of an easier solution, and I think personally it looks better. But if you get a really good air cooler that's set up properly, then that's probably what I would actually want in my own personal PC. The last couple of things to mention is that a great way to actually improve the looks of your PC is just to include a couple of these, which are magnetic RGB strips. They plug into your motherboard normally, and you only need two of these. They cost around about £15 for a pair and it will give your PC a nice glow. That will just make it look a whole lot better. And don't forget that you will also need a copy of Windows in order for everything to work. You can download this from the Microsoft Store, but you'll need a product key to actually activate it and get rid of that horrible watermark that will appear. And you can normally actually migrate your copy of Windows from your old PC to your new one, and it won't cost you any extra money. But that's pretty much everything I have to say. If you do want to check out sort of my suggested builds, shall we say, or current pricing on any of these products featured, you can find them all linked in the description down below. And of course, while you're down there, don't forget to check out our pre-roll sponsors, Asus and Nvidia, and their awesome high frame rate graphics cards. If you're playing multiplayer, then frames win games, and getting the fastest graphics card is oh so important. Asus sell the 1660 Super from £209, bringing high refresh rate 1080p gaming to the masses. Find the graphics card that's right for you down all the links below and start winning your journey today. A massive thank you to you guys for checking out this video, I really appreciate it. Don't forget to check out all of these links to give you some more information on getting your own kick-ass gaming PC, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you